Hi, I'm Tom and I make electronic music under the name Bamboo Leaves. In today's video, we're going to dissect a track in the style of Bonobo that you just heard in the introduction. Bonobo makes textured and organic sounding electronic music that blends samples and electronically generated sounds in a particularly unique way. I personally take huge inspiration from Bonobo in my own music, so I hope to be able to do him justice. If you're interested, check out my music through the links in the description below. If you found this tutorial useful, make sure to like this video for the YouTube algorithm and to subscribe to this page for more videos like this. So let's break down this track. This track revolves around a main sample loop that I've created uh, using some VST musical instruments, uh, exporting it to audio and then manipulating that in a particularly uh, Bonobo-esque way. So what I'll do is I'll play that main riff, that main sample that plays throughout. In order to get this sound, I started with a little musical uh, MIDI instrument loop that I created using a musical VST. I made use of the felt instrument Jasno Mallets uh, instrument in order to get the original sound. I'll play what I did. I just played it in through a keyboard. Uh, we'll have a listen to that now. Bounce that down to audio through the bounce in place. I'll just play that. So this is just the thing you heard before, but it's in the audio form. In order to get to the sort of chopped up audio bonobo sounding sample, I looped bits over and tried to manipulate it so that it sounded like it had a cool groove and a cool kind of rhythm to the sound. What I'll do is I will create a mild recreation of the end sound that I ended up with just now. I have now messed around with that sort of that sample, chopped it up, sort of changed it around a bit. I wanted to sort of show you kind of how you might go about chopping something up and how you'd sort of loop something over to create like a interesting uh, percussive or sort of rhythmic element to it. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll play that now. What I'll do is I'll just do a fade in and a fade out for each of those to get rid of any of those pops and clicks. You can imagine how if you put some drums in with that it might sound a bit more bonobo-esque. I'll just sort of put a kick drum in so we can listen to that. That sounds a little bit like his style. So for the second half of the song where it kind of breaks down a little bit more, it gets a little bit more moody, I have just taken that same sample loop and I've I've merged it all together. Um, you can do that through doing some join. You can use that join, command J, uh, join them all together. And that's what I've got here with this one over here. And because I've put it onto a separate track, just because I wanted to make it easier and I've given it a much more of a low pass so we can have a listen to just that one. We'll listen to the first one and it goes into the second one. I'll go over a bit of the processing that I've put on that. Nothing too crazy. I've just put a bit of a bandpass filter so I've gotten rid of some of the high end um, frequencies and I've gotten rid of quite a lot of the low end frequencies so that it's not competing with any of th anything else in the mix. I've got compression in it to keep the dynamics in check. Um, and I also have an LFO tool that's doing that side chain pumping sound that you've got. Moving on to the, the third track, I have this pad sound, so I'll just play that on its own for you. If I just take off the processing from all of that, 
you can hear that it's just a uh, very simple repetition of one of those samples that I've created myself there. But if I bring in the bandpass filter, I also bring in a bit of an echo I've put onto the track with one eighth dotted. We can kind of hear how the sound sort of starts to shape up. It's quite low in the mix and it's sort of meant to just sort of provide a bit more atmosphere to the other instruments that are going on. I've also put an LFO tool on there and I've put a sample delay to spread the signal really far to the left and to the right. Yeah, so that's just meant to sit as a bed and be quite sort of atmospheric throughout the track. Moving on to the next sections, we have the uh, the bass instruments. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just play all three of the bass instruments and then we can break them down. That sound is created by blending three different synthesized instruments. So the first one we have a sort of a, just a, a standard bass guitar. I'll show you the MIDI. That one's just a bass guitar sample using the quick sampler and logic. And I've also put quite a aggressive low pass filter on that because I wanted to take out a lot of the clicks. The next one is just a sub bass patch. So it's just the quick sampler again in logic with the initialized preset. That's just some sine waves and I've got it playing nice and low and I have an LFO tool on there that will do the side chaining for me. So we can just listen to that. It'll be quite quiet in the mix. You'll only be able to hear that if you've got good speakers or some headphones that can pick up those sub frequencies. And then thirdly, we have this retro synth bass sound. I'll play that for you now. I did a bit more sound design to create this one. So this has been created using Logic's uh, own retro synth. The square wave that's been sort of moved, the pulse width has been moved up a little bit. Um, and it has a mix between a saw as well. I have the filter that has a little bit of resonance boosted and the filter envelope will slowly open up the filter and then close it. So it has like a bit of a movement to it. So what I'll do is I'll take off the, the additional sort of FX processing and we can just listen to it. Using an EQ, I've taken out uh, lots of the high end to make sure that that doesn't come through and I've put a, a compressor on it to bring the level up and to make sure that the dynamic range is all squashed in. I've added an overdrive, so Logic's overdrive um, with quite a lot of drive and quite a high tone um, in order to sort of add a bit more saturation and crunch to make it a bit more retro sounding. Um, I think Bonobo has sort of a series of outboard gear, maybe retro synths to be able to create some of this sort of more lush gritty sounding bass lines that he might have in his tracks. I'll just play that with that. And without. It's not hugely noticeable, but it adds a little bit more bite to the sound. Um, I've got a LFO tool on there for the side chain, and then I have a Logic Tremolo that actually pushes the sound to the left and the right. Um, it does it at a rate of one bar, so it really slowly just moves across the stereo field. So I'll just play that now with all of that activated. I think that movement adds a bit to the track. It's quite subtle, but it kind of keeps you sort of swaying side to side and it keeps you, the listener interested in the music that's going on. I have another synth in here that is doing sort of a little bit of like a, a lead sound, but it's also quite subtle in the mix. Take off the processing and show you the synth. So this is also using Logic's Retro Synth. It has quite a fast um, filter and amp envelope that kind of creates a bit more of a plucking sound. An interesting thing is I've added a little bit of glide with a very fast glide time so that it kind of whips up to the next note and down to the previous note. Um, what I'll do is I'll play it uh, without any of that processing and you can kind of hear that sound a little bit uh, more clearly. So 
So you can kind of hear it whipping up and down to the sounds quite quickly. I've got a, um, a bandpass EQ on there. I have a compressor, I've got an echo on there that adds a bit more of a groove to it. So if I just uh, play it now, it just has that creative element to it with the effects. Um, I have an LFO tool for the sidechain, overdrive to add a bit more grit. And then again, I have a tremolo on there that will move the sound left and right and it'll kind of keep it dotting around and it keeps the sound quite interesting. So again, now with all of the processing on it, we can have a listen. That's all the instrumentation parts, so I'll just now move on to the drums. There's quite a few things going on there. There's a few loops and some drum samples that are going on. I'll just start with the kick. There's nothing too fancy about this one. Some kick sample. I've used a fade to make the bass drum quite snappy, so it's a really quick uh, kick. I've just got a low pass filter um, and a bit of a boost in the low end to give it some more sub. Next one, we have some hi hats. For these, I actually did drag a sample into a quick sampler, but yeah, it's just a hi-hat sample. And I have dragged in the start of the sample with a bit more of a fade, so it doesn't have like a really clicky uh, start to it. It's a bit softer, a little bit of a an envelope on the filter, closes as it hits a little bit and opens and closes to create a bit more interesting sound to it. So if I play it without that filter, and now with, I don't know, it sounds a little bit more um, organic maybe, or sort of a bit duller, a little bit less crisp. With that, I've just used a sample delay to spread them left and right so it's completely wide for the mix. To create that sort of, um, that kind of groove to the hi-hats, I've used some velocity automation. So it will kind of go um, so I have the velocity starting quite low and then getting higher for every four and then that just loops over. So if I play that, But also at the same time as doing that, on the actual logic automation, I have the gain that will slowly automate up and down. So it just kind of brings it up and down ever so slightly so that it kind of gives a bit of movement to the sound. And so what I'll do is I'll play it now so you can listen to that while looking at the automation. It's one of the things that I think Bonobo does in his music where he does quite a lot of subtle instrumentation with the percussion and the sort of the drums and brings things in and out quite a lot. Um, and it's sort of one of the things about his music is that it's really detailed and you have to listen really closely in order to actually sort of hear all of these little things that are going on. I've got a shaker. I've just got a shaker loop. I don't think I've done too much with that. Let's just have a listen to that. Yeah, that's just a shaker loop. But what I've done is I've added on the LFO tool so that that has a pumping effect with the rest of the tracks. So if I took that off and now with it on. Yeah, so it adds to that pump and it keeps you kind of nodding along with the track. Here we have a cajon loop that I have chopped up a little bit and it just kind of comes in kind of a bit sparsely throughout. So I've taken out a lot of the high end and a lot of the low end, so it kind of just comes in quite subtly. When everything else is playing, you can't really notice it, but there is that little sort of, it pumps in a little bit. Um, it gives it a bit more of a worldly sound because that's one of the things that Bonobo does in his tracks. He uses sort of world instruments and loops and things that he's probably found on vinyls or he's recorded himself. Um, so that kind of having that in there is quite subtle, but it kind of gives you that impression that there's a bit of a world influence to this track. Next, I have this scrape percussion. So it's a bit of like a, I think it's a scrape of some drum. It's across a drum or it's some stick that's being scraped against something. So I'll just, um, I'll just play that. 
Again, I've used the fade in order to make it quite short and snappy. And then I have a reverb that has the tail for me. I've gone really aggressive with the high pass. So I'm taking out all the low end. I would just want this to sit quite high and provide that air to the track. I've brought in this second scrape percussion that kind of gives a bit more of a rolling beat to it. And it adds to the sort of the, uh, the groove of the track. Um, in order to differentiate the two, I have pitched that one by plus four instead of plus five, so it's a little bit lower, and it has a slightly different EQ um, profile to the other one. So let's have a listen to those both so that we can kind of see why I've done that. Now we'll move on to the snare. I wanted to have a really snappy, short, kind of organic sounding hit. And it's I'm using a sample that is probably something just hitting just a piece of wood or it's just hitting a wall or a door or something because it's not an actual snare. It's more of just like a, like a really sort of natural found sound kind of thing. You might be able to hear this. It's something like that. So if I extend out this sample here, yeah. What I've done is I shorten that to make it snappier. There you go. It's really, really short and snappy. And so on top of that, I added a bit of room reverb so that it sounded, you know, that it was sitting in a specific room and it sounds a bit nicer. If I just remove that, we can listen. Really dry. Add it again. It's just a bit nicer. I have this noise sample, so there's sort of this, um, I think I have some Foley sounds um, and I thought that this was sounding quite nice and it kind of adds to that organic textured sound to have bits of Foley scattered in and amongst the track. So let's just have a listen to just that on its own. So yeah, it's just this kind of like really thin sounding scrape or like something dropping some some beads falling or something like that. Uh, it gives just quite a nice sort of additional element to it. So what I'll do is I'll play that with the snare and maybe some hi-hats. Again, it's really subtle, it's quite quiet, but it's one of those things where you just want quite a lot of detail in your drums to have something that sounds like Bonobo because there's quite a lot going on, I think, in his tracks and he's got a lot of layering going on. And to just finish up the drums, I have got a clap sound um, that just sort of comes in to emphasize one of the beats. Got quite a lot of reverb on that one, so it kind of just gives an extra clack and sort of emphasis to the end of the drums at the end of the phrase. So I'll just listen to all of those drums together. Yeah, so on that like last beat, you've got that really reverberant ending that brings you back onto the first of the loop again. But on the transition, I have a reverse symbol with quite a lot of reverb on it and then I have a little bit of a downlifter so it's just some some noise to make that transition into the next section so that will just uh, introduce you to the next phase of the song so if I just play that transition now we can hear And so in that second half of the song, I just take some instruments out so that it kind of changes the mood a little bit. And then on that last uh, bar, I bring in that echoey synth that I showed you before. So what we'll do is we'll just finish off by having one listen through the track.
Okay, well, well, that's the end of that breakdown. I hope you enjoyed watching that and you learned something and it's something that you can apply to some music that you're creating, perhaps. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Let me know if you have any questions about the stuff that I've just gone through in the comments and I'll try to get around to answering them. Otherwise, I'm out. Thank you.